Welcome to Play It or Not, my name is Chris McLaughlin and today I'm going to be reviewing an adventure game called Adventures in the Magic Kingdom by Capcom. Now you know when you're a kid and you watch some TV show and it's the coolest thing in the world and when you're an adult you watch it again and think to yourself what the hell was I thinking watching this piece of crap? No wonder I was flipping burgers for a living, I deserve this. Yeah that's pretty much how I felt when I played Adventures in the Magic Kingdom. See when I was a kid this game ruled. You got decent graphics, what seemed like five different games to play. You're running around Disney Park with your favorite characters, fighting a bunch of ugly ghosts and pirates and helping Mickey Mouse out. I mean, what more does a seven-year-old kid want from a game? But now that I revisited this game, everything seems to bug me. Let's start with the story. Since Victor Lucas hasn't called to offer me a job yet, I have no money to hire people to do the voiceovers. So I'm gonna do them myself. <clears throat> Hi, Goofy. It's time for the big parade. Where's the golden key to the gates? Oh, golly, Smoosh, I'm sorry, Mickey. I'm out to live in the castle, hoo <laughs> hoo. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Don't we need six silver keys to open the gates? And, uh, well, I'm just not sure where I left them, but they're somewhere in the Magic Kingdom, hoo <laughs> hoo. Maybe you can find the six keys for us. Five are in attractions, but you'll have to ask around for the sixth one. I'm sure you can do it, but please hurry, the parade can't go on without them. So basically I'm running around the park looking for keys to open a gate for a parade. That's uh... That's great. You start off at the entrance of the park and immediately you see another kid, who naturally you walk up to him and he demands I answer a bunch of stuff. Then he sends me off to another kid who asks me more questions and they send me off to another person and another person and then this goes on for a while. I haven't even played any of the minigames yet and I already feel like I'm being interrogated by the FBI. Which coincidentally is exactly the way my last trip to Disney ended. By the way they let you pick a name for yourself. Big mistake. And while I'm at it, have you ever seen this character in your life? I'll tell you who he looks like. Cody from The Rescuers Down Under. So this park has 5 rides. Thankfully it's a small world was closed. And so is the castle. The coolest place on the map and you can't access it all the way till the very end. Why would they do that to a 7 year old kid? By the way, I'm assuming 7 year old kids are the main target for someone who would want to play this game. Alright, so first I'm taking a ride through the Haunted Mansion. The objective of this game is to not get killed while advancing through the entire level. The first thing you're going to notice about this game is that it's actually pretty hard. You only get 3 hearts, a limited amount of candles to throw at ghosts, because apparently ghosts don't like vanilla scented candles. The ghosts reappear all the time, there's no halfway mark, so if you die, you're placed at the very beginning. And to top it all off, you have a time limit to beat this level. Next up is the Pirates of the Caribbean level. Again, you get to see Cody in a side scroll, and the objective of this game is to rescue dames in distress, and then light a fire so that someone can see it and rescue you. Now I know what you're thinking, why the hell do I need to light a fire if the whole island is burning to the ground? Are the people who are rescuing me blind? Maybe they're waiting to smell my vanilla scented candles to rescue me. Speaking of vanilla scented candles, you don't get any. So if you're trying to fight pirates, you're gonna have to jump over them. And that's it. After that, I decided to check out Big Thunder Mountain. In this ride, you're driving a train and you gotta end up at a certain lane at the end of the level. This level is a gong show. It's one guess after another. There's no real way of telling which way you're supposed to go. I wouldn't even bother telling you how angry I got when I kept doing this level over and over just to end up on the wrong track in the end. The next level has you in a car race against Pete. This one was actually not too bad, though I did find a couple of problems here and there. And you don't really have to beat anybody, just as long as you finish the level before the time runs out. The last level is Space Mountain, and man, it's annoying. It's basically a reflex game. The bottom part tells you what button to press on the controller. You're so concentrated on looking at what the next button is going to be that you never end up seeing the actual game. Which, now that I'm looking at it, I'm not really impressed anyways. It takes forever to finish this level and you only get to make 3 mistakes or you're done. After all that trouble, you finally give the keys to Mickey and this is your reward. Right there. How the hell did I like this game when I was a kid? I must have been high on chocolate frosted sugar bomb cereal to think this game was awesome. By the way, this game is getting a 6.5 out of 10. For adults, it's actually quite challenging and the graphics are alright and I can't get that Pirates of the Caribbean song out of my head. For kids, you'll never ever ever 
past this game. Go play DuckTales or Chippendale or something. Remember, I'm on Facebook right here and Twitter right there. And if you haven't done so, subscribe. I have at least two shows a week. What more do you want than that? This is Chris McLaughlin, and you have just been played.